Hello friends, this video on direct and inverse proportion part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. 3. If a box of sweets is divided among 24 children, they will get 5 sweets each. How many would each get if the number of children is reduced by 4? So here we are dealing with two quantities. One is the number of children and the second quantity is the number of sweets each get. Now as the number of children increases, the number of sweets that each get will decrease. So basically number of children is inversely proportional to the number of sweets that each children get. Now let's say that number of children is denoted by x and number of sweets is denoted by y. So in this problem x1 is given as 24 and corresponding value of this x is 5. That is y1 is equal to 5. So when 5 is the number of sweets that each get, at that time total number of children is 24. So in the next scenario, what is the total number of children reduced by 4? That means 24 minus 4 which is equal to 20. And in this case, what is the value of y2? That is how many sweets each children get in this case? That we do not know. We need to find that out. Now, as per the relationship of inverse proportion, we know that x1, y1 is equal to x2, y2. So from this, we can say y2 is equal to x1, y1 divided by x2. That is equal to 24 into 5 divided by 20. So 5, 4 is a 20, 4, 6 is a 24. So therefore, each children would now receive 6 sweets. Question number 4. A contractor estimates that 3 persons would rewire Jasminder's house in 4 days. If he uses 4 persons instead of 3, how long should they take to complete the job? So that means here we are again dealing with 2 quantities. One is the number of worker or the number of people and the other quantity is the time taken to complete the work. So here you see if you increase the number of people then the time taken would reduce which shows that the number of people is inversely proportional to the time taken. So here let's assume that number of people is denoted by x time taken is denoted by y. So x1 is given as 3 and corresponding value of y1 is 4 because it takes 4 days. In the second scenario, x2 is equal to 4 persons given here and y2 is something that we need to calculate. So as per the relationship of inverse proportion, we know that x1, y1 is equal to x2, y2. Therefore, we can say y2 is equal to x1, y1 divided by x2. That is equal to 3 into 4 divided by 4. So this is equal to 3. So that means they would take 3 days if there are 4 persons. Question number 5. A factory requires 42 machines to produce a given number of articles in 63 days. How many machines would be required to produce the same number of articles in 54 days? So here again you have two quantities. Number of machines and number of days required. And very clearly you can see that they are inversely proportional to each other. If you have more machines, it will take less number of days. If you have less machines, it will take more number of days. So let this be denoted by y, x and this be denoted by y. So x1 is given as 42, corresponding y1 is given as 63. x2 we have to find out and corresponding y2 is 54. So we know that x1, y1 is equal to x2, y2. Therefore, x2 is equal to x1, y1 divided by y2, which is equal to 42 into 63 divided by 54. So this is 9 into 7, 9 into 6, 6, 7 is 42. So this is 49. So 49 machines would be required. Question number 6. A school has 8 periods a day, each of 45 minutes duration. How long would each period be if the school has 9 periods a day, assuming the number of school hours remain the same? So in this case, if your school hours remain the same, that means if the time at which the school starts and the school closes, if that remains the same, and if you want to increase the number of periods, then what will happen? The duration of each period will reduce. 
that's very much obvious so therefore we can say that number of periods is inversely proportional to the duration of each period so let's say number of periods is denoted by x and duration of each period is denoted by y so x1 is equal to 8 periods corresponding y1 when 8 periods exist then each period is of 45 minutes duration what is x2 x2 is 9 periods and corresponding y2 we will have to find out so again the same relationship x1 y1 is equal to x2 y2 therefore y2 is equal to x1 y1 divided by x2 this is equal to 8 into 45 divided by 9 so 9 5 so 45 8 5 so 40 so this time if you have 9 periods in that case each period would be of 40 minutes duration so with this we have reached towards the end of this lesson on inverse and direct proportion and I hope that this lesson would have helped you. So here you would have seen that the concepts are pretty simple. It, it, it was a very small lesson with simpler concepts and try to solve more questions so that you gain more confidence on the concepts. See you all in the next lesson. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.